We have made it to the week of the Open Championship, and while the best golfers in the world are there, all eyes on that guy who was at the time a very young Tiger Woods. Tiger has won the Open three times, two of them the first two coming at St. Andrews. The question is, though, what version of Tiger could we see this week? Tiger Woods back in the course after skipping out on the U.S. Open. Prior to that, he withdrew from the PGA Championship. Here's more from the big cat on his future. I don't know if, what my career is going to be like. You know, as I told you, I'm not going to play a full schedule ever again. Uh, my body just won't, just won't allow me to do that. So um, I don't know how many Open Championships I have left here at St. Andrews, um, but I wanted this one. Um, you know, it, it started here for me in, in 95, and if it ends here in 22, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If I get the chance to play one more, it'd be great. Um, but there's no guarantee. Tiger Woods, of course, coming off that car accident last February there, taking a look at his wins at the Open. Uh, he's a longer shot, 65 to 1 odds to win. If he were to win, it would set the PGA Tour record for most career wins at 83 and move up to 16 major championship titles, but he would still be too short of Jack Nicklaus. Let's welcome the host of Course Record on CBS Sports Network, our very good friend Michael Breed here. So let's talk about Tiger Woods, his return to St. Andrews. He talked about the importance of it, but said, look, I don't know how many more of these I have. So give us your outlook for him this week, and what is the chance this could be the last time he plays at this particular course? Well, I mean, listen, this is a, it's an interesting time, isn't it? Because what we're, what we're seeing is a guy that after this accident, uh, he's trying to figure out what his his body can do now, and um, and frankly, we're all just getting to watch this. He's amazed us for however long, the, whatever the number of years are since 1995 was his first chance coming in here. So you're talking nearly what 30 years that that he has amazed us with his talent. And for those that were uh, aware of Tiger before that, even longer. But I can what I can tell you is is that, and he said this in his press conference. This means a great deal to him. This this has been something that he has been talking about and talking with Joey LaCava, his caddy. They have targeted this event, this one event, all year long. In fact, I thought this would be the only major that he played in. I didn't think he was going to play at Augusta. I certainly didn't think he was going to play at the PGA Championship. And what's incredible about him is he got to the weekend in both of those major championships. Now, at the PGA, he only played one round. At Augusta National, he played two over the weekend, but not great performance. So the question is, not only is he going to be able to do it, but what will we get if he makes the cut and he's in contention? What will we get out of him when the fatigue starts to set in? And what's also curious to me this week is the, the prior two majors that he played in, he had a early tee time and then a late tee time. So he was early, late Thursday, Friday. This week, he's going to be late early. He tees off at 2.59 on Thursday. And then again, quick flip turn, 9.58 on Friday. And so the question is, is he going to be rested for that quick flip turn? And then can he perform on the weekend? Should he make the cut or be in contention? Is that rest, that additional rest that he might have gotten on Friday going to help him perform over the weekend? He shot 78-78 at Augusta National in April. And then, of course, at the PGA Championship in May, he shot 79 and didn't play on Sunday. He has targeted this week, as he said, it may be the very last time that he is at St. Andrews for the Open Championship. He said you don't know what we'd see from him on the weekend if he were in contention, but I can guarantee the fans uh, would be absolutely insane. Let's talk about Xander Shoffley here looking to become the first golfer since Lee Trevino back in 1971 to win the week before the Open Championship and then go on to win the Open. Uh, but that would be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tournaments for a win for Xander Shoffley and to keep thinking, oh, he can't do it. But the guy keeps winning right now, Michael Breed. Well, not only is he winning, but he's playing great golf. His his highest finish in this run since he won at the Zurich Classic with Patrick Cantlay was a tied 18th at the Memorial. That's his worst outing. He has played phenomenal golf. He finished tied fifth at the AT&T Byron Nelson. He finished tied 13th at the PGA Championship, and he finished tied 14th at the U.S. Open. And then, oh yeah, by the way, he goes on to the to win at the Travelers and then the Scottish Open. He is playing fantastic golf, consistent golf. He's driving it well. He's putting it very well. And the thing that will be a, a uh, an important statistic for him this week 
He's second on the PGA Tour in proximity from the sand. You start thinking about what what welcomes you at uh, at the Open Championship and at St. Andrews around the green. It's those bunkers. He is one of the very best on the PGA Tour. So all facets of his game are clicking as he goes into this 150th. Open Championship. We've been talking a lot about him. Somebody we haven't actually been talking a lot about is the defending champion, Colin Markawa. Uh, maybe that's because he has now had 19 winless starts. He has not won since winning the Open last year. What are your expectations for him? Well, it's been an up and down year for Colin. When you start to look at what Colin has done, he's played nice golf upon occasion. If you take his last three events at the Scottish Open, he misses the cut. At the U.S. Open, he finishes tied fifth with two 66s in there. And then at the Memorial, he misses the cut there. Prior to that, it's a lot of mediocrity up until the Masters where he finished fifth. And you can see that right there. So what do I expect out of Colin? What I hope out of Colin is some consistency. He's got everything that would lead you to believe that that he could have a good week. And at the same time, the challenge is strokes gained around the green, he's 163rd. Strokes gained putting, he's 85th. He's a great ball striker and a tremendous iron player. But as he gets closer to the green, that's when you start to run into some challenges. And that's where it sort of let him down. When he's striking the ball well, he's going to shoot a low score. When he's not striking it well and missing greens, now all of a sudden, that's when you see a 76 pop up. And in order for him to have a great week, he's got to have a very good bad round. In other words, when he plays poorly, he's going to have to be right around 70 in order for him to have a chance to win. Let's talk about the favorite to win the tournament, one Rory McIlroy. Uh, he won the Open back in 2014. Look, when it comes to off the course, he looks great. He's been out there all week with Tiger. He's been waving to his daughter. He's been all smiles. When it comes to his play on the course, though, what can we expect from Rory? I think you're going to get more of the same since that, six, that round of 64 on Sunday at Augusta National. He has played some exceptional golf and some consistent golf. And I think the one thing that's interesting with Rory is he has become the real voice of the PGA Tour. You can see when, 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 he, um, when, when he went up to Canada... And he played up there when all this live stuff was going out and he wins that. He made a specific point to make sure that everybody knew that that win was one more win than Greg Norman. And that I thought was, was a really important point. You have seen Rory McIlroy now take the stand and represent the PGA Tour. And that I think has been a great distraction for him, but it's also been something that has put a drive in him. And so when I see Rory McIlroy, what I see is a guy who is driven to win to show that the best players, in fact, do play on the PGA Tour. He has been forthright in how he feels about this PGA Tour and this live uh, competition. But what I also think has happened is he's gained a lot of confidence with that bogey-free round of 64 and then, of course, picking up that win up in Canada. I expect him to have a great week. It's no, uh, it's, it's no um, reason to make he's going to win. He, he's the favorite, 9-1. to one. I think that, that he is the favorite. He's my choice this week for all kinds of reasons. The, the uh, friendship that he has with Tiger and what Tiger is helping him understand about St. Andrews, also the importance of this for him in the global scale. I think it would be a perfect way to, to end a Sunday at the 150th U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, Open Championship with a win out of Roy McIlroy. It would just be great for the game of golf, and it would be great for the DP World Tour and great for the PGA Tour. It would be for both, and it would be a lot of fun to watch him win. Let's talk about world number one, Scotty Scheffler here. Uh, he can finish off the major season the same way he started there. Here's the thing. Missed the cut at the Scottish Open, but we know that he can bounce back in a big way. He missed the cut at the PGA, and then two of his next three tournaments, he either finished second or T2. We, we saw him a little frustrated last weekend. What are we going to see from him this week? I think the frustration is good for a Scotty Scheffler, who rarely shows his emotions, by the way. Look, he finished tied eight at the Scottish Open. And this is a guy who, uh, growing up in Texas and having that understanding of wind, this is a comfortable environment for him. And as well, I think he's one of those guys that has a brilliant short game. 20th on tour in strokes gained around the green. He's a fantastic ball striker. First in greens and regulation on the PGA Tour and seventh in strokes gained approach. The putting, I think, is going to be a, 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 a non-issue for him. The question is going to be, can he hit the ball close enough to, to avoid those three putts? 
He's he's 90th on tour in strokes gained uh, uh, in, in approach putting. And when I think of Scotty Scheffler, I think about one of the, the guys on the PGA Tour that has maybe the most well-rounded game. He's a great ball striker. He's got good short game. He's got a great um, uh, putting stroke. And his mind is extremely strong. And so when I think of Scotty Scheffler, no reason why he wouldn't go out there and perform the way that he would perform and, and bring this home. I don't think that it's going to be his week, but I do think it's going to be a great week for him. He's going to follow up that T8 at the Scottish Open with a top five, in my opinion. Michael, one more golfer we want to look at. John Rahm here. Look, uh, he's been great at majors. He's made the cut in the past 12 majors. Coming off a T12 finish at the Scottish Open. Uh, I love this. He said he's, he's really wanted to dive into the history of St. Andrews. In particular, Seve Balleceros, the last Spaniard who won here. He said he's been watching him over and over and over on 18 with the fist in the air, trying to recreate that in his mind. What do we see from John Rahm? You cannot win an Open championship with ball striking alone. You have to have phenomenal touch and short game. And he has not shown that this year on the PGA Tour. He's 144th in strokes gained around the green. And so when you think about John Rahm, you think about John Rahm as a great ball striker. He's first on tour in strokes gained off the tee. A phenomenal ball striker and a phenomenal driver of the ball. The problem is, is that at St. Andrews, that that wonderful driving uh, ability is not going to be the asset that it might be in a given event on the PGA Tour. What happens here is with the wind that we're expecting, and it's going to be upwards of 15, 20 miles an hour out of the west or west-southwest, you're going to see a lot of greens missed. And so it's going to put a lot of pressure on the short game. And that is where, where John, frankly, has struggled this year. If, if this was a couple of years ago, his short game was intact, you would go, yeah, okay, I, I give him a great opportunity, a great chance to win. But I'm a little bit leery about, the, about his scrambling ability and also, too, the putting hasn't been what it once was. I think right now he's 63rd strokes gained putting. You start to think about a guy who, who – a former world number one who's a, a marvelous ball striker, but he gets worse as he gets close to the green. Very similar to what we see with a Colin Morikawa. And so for me, I don't think that this is going to be a win week for John Rahm. I think this is going to be a confidence building week for him. And I think he's going to have a nice week, but I don't think that it's going to be a win week. If anything, I like his group at the beginning. Uh, he's 16 to 1 odds to win, as is Jordan Spieth, and they are paired together the first two days there. Michael, thank you so much. Have a great week. Enjoy the tournament. It is going to be phenomenal. You can hear more from our good friend Michael Breed on his show, Course Record with Michael Breed, Mondays on CBS Sports Network. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.